So during the recent Iridori Festival event, there was that one quest where we solved the mystery of the scalped Raiden Shogun figurines. It was very cute overall, but one part of it that I found to be extremely interesting was the unexpected return of the bartering system. Although, to be honest, it really should be bargain and not barter. The only other times this mechanic was utilized was first in Act 2 of Liyue's Archon Quest, which has been in the game since launch, and then in Child Story Quest that was added back in version 1.1. It's a pretty neat little addition, as it makes the very cutscene heavy quests a bit more interactive, and while I don't think this was part of the most recent occurrence, it previously rewarded the player for being risky by actually giving you back the Mora you saved, making it an even more engaging feature. I mean, it definitely made sense to use it again in the context of this quest, but it has been well over a year since it was last used. The reason I'm bringing this up though is because it got me wondering, are there any other Genshin mechanics that I've forgotten about in the hundreds of days playing this game? After spending some time thinking, I was actually able to come up with quite a few. And to be clear, these are all things that can still currently be accessed, so this list won't just be all stuff from past events. Now, I already know there's going to be someone in the comments claiming they think about these things every single day, but this is a list of 10 things which I feel most players have probably forgotten about by now. Are any of them worth bringing more attention to, or should they all stay irrelevant for the rest of Genshin's lifespan? Let's find out. Just like in Child Story Quest, other very early story quests included one-off gameplay gimmicks to make things a bit more interesting. The first one came from the dungeon section in Amber Story Quest, where she proposes the Traveler take a modified gliding exam by airbombing Hillichurls. Seems a bit cruel for this usually cheerful character, but hey, at least it did make for a pretty cool gameplay sequence. Having to maintain your height while flying over enemies and avoiding arrows made for a pretty nice change of pace from the usual hack and slash. This combined with the gliding and shooting sequence from the early Mondstadt Argon quest makes me think it would be pretty cool to see an event in the future that features bullet hell style aerial combat. In Razor's story quest there was another one time feature, this time in the form of a consumable item. An early part requires you to collect raw meat, and so Razor gives you two hunting traps. Its description reads, used to trap beasts of a certain size. If you pay attention in the wilds to collect them, you can make one like this. Set one down, and then conceal it carefully. That's not that helpful, so what you're actually supposed to do with them is lay one down and scare the boars to run into them. You're probably thinking it's more practical to just kill them outright, and you'd be correct, but killing a boar this way actually drops 4-5 to five raw meat instead of the typical 2. So if you just so happen to be farming raw meat, it might have been a somewhat useful tool if not for the fact that the two traps Razor gives you are the only ones you can get, ever. I refuse to use my last one for that exact reason. But besides its rarity, I don't think anyone would really care if they added another method to acquire them. Though I do think it would be pretty interesting if we got a hunting event that focused on techniques which don't involve straight up killing. Alright, so I'm cheating a bit with this next one since it technically was part of an event, but it's just too funny not to mention. We all know Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn is Genshin's only existing collaboration character, and most probably remember the KFC one for the glider and food recipes. But do you remember the obscure third collaboration that Genshin has had which featured in-game items? That's right, I'm talking about the Google Play teapot furniture. During this promotion, which ran from July to September in 2021, around version 1.6, buying Google Play gift card bundles would grant you some bonus in-game items. At $50 and up, you receive 10 Heroes Wits, 2 Google Chairs, 1 Google Table, and the Celebration Vastness name card, which featured 4 elemental slimes to represent Google's colors. Honestly, as a whale myself, I kind of regret not picking this up just for collection purposes, but I remember I just could not bring myself to do it at the time because of how ugly the furniture looks. Obviously though, if you weren't already planning on buying Google Play Store money, this was definitely a huge scam. I think that in general, having mementos from quests and events be placeable teapot furniture that you can show off is great, but this was definitely not the way to do it, so I'm glad we haven't gotten anything like this since. Saying that Genshin players hate artifact farming wouldn't be much of a profound statement. There are just so many layers of RNG in place that make it nearly impossible to get the exact piece you're looking for. 
Obviously, this is an intentional mechanic to try and retain player playtime, but just like with the resin system, Hoyaverse knows that it's disliked. This is why I really thought they would slowly take measures to improve the system, similar to how resin has gradually changed since launch. But unfortunately, all we currently have to show for this is the artifact strong boxes. I don't have any real criticisms with the way the mechanic itself works. You can put in any 3 5 star artifacts and get a brand new one, effectively giving players a resinless way of rerolling pieces they don't want. Being able to put in any set also means you can convert random artifacts you receive into a set of your choice, like the ones given from bosses and the spiral abyss. This would all be fine if not for the fact that Gladiator's Finale, Wanderer's Troop, Bloodstained Chivalry, and Noblesse Oblige were the only four sets available. I had initially figured that more would be added over time, but since the mechanic's inception back in 2.0, we've only had these. Making them for every set wouldn't tackle the root of the problem when it comes to artifact farming, but it would at least be a step in the right direction. Another set of items which can be found within the alchemy table are potions. Because food plays a role in a lot of quests, and each character has a specialty dish, players aren't going to forget about cooking, despite their temporary stat buffs being not that relevant. The game's difficulty is not high enough to necessitate cooking, and in the most difficult content, the Spiral Abyss, food isn't permitted at all. Potions, on the other hand, which grant temporary damage boosts or resistance for only particular elements, are much more forgettable, especially since the ingredients for the recipes are pretty specific. The only people really using these are those who want to showcase a character at their absolute peak, no matter how impractical it may be, which I imagine is a very small percentage of the player base. I feel like this next one is a bit of a low hanging fruit because we all knew this would happen, but fishing. It was introduced in 2.1 with strong incentive to play due to the free to play weapon The Catch releasing alongside Raiden Shogun and a fishing based event coming soon after. But because this was a rare instance where the free to play weapon wasn't time gated by a specific event, it was not surprising at all that a lot of players speed ran for refinement 5 and then had zero reason to fish after that. I mean, unless you really wanted that one name card that requires you to catch 2000 total. It's strange because new types of fish were added with Enconomia, but they don't serve any purpose other than being potential decorations. That said though, even if they did update the exchange shops, the exact same problem would happen. The devs just kind of dug themselves in a hole with this mechanic being so straightforward and repetitive. The battle pass is a bit of an unusual existence within Genshin Impact. Whereas most games that have them use them as a primary source of revenue, Genshins aren't emphasized because obviously the money lies in the gacha. But for those who play the game consistently, it does have pretty good value. And of course, it allows players to cheaply acquire some strong weapons. Naturally, the battle pass has changed a bit over time, as Fragile Resin was added to it in 1.3, and in 2.0, the Monset talent materials were exchanged with Inazuma ones. But it was in 1.5 when the most notable change happened to it, which was the adjustment to weekly missions. In coordination with the Serenity Teapot releasing that update, missions related to it were added. Conversely, the missions for collecting 100 local specialties in Monset and Eliyue were phased out. To be honest, I do feel a bit of nostalgia towards those because they existed back in a time where I was a lot more committed to completing the battle pass, but their removal made me think at the time that switching up the missions would be a regular thing. I don't know, it's just that for me, completing the battle pass has felt very mundane for a long time now, so I just wish Hoyoverse would try to experiment a bit more with it. The Archive is a pretty neat feature in Genshin. You can see a lot of the stuff you've collected, check how many times you've killed a type of enemy, and so on. But I really could not care any less about the travel log section. It contains all the Archon quests and story quests you've completed, but only the text and voice lines. I guess it can be useful if you really want to know what the other branch of an inconsequential text option was, but it would be a hundred times better if we could actually see the cutscenes of those quests. It would especially make things easier on me for making videos, but honestly, it would be really cool to just go back and relive some of those old moments. I'm sure there's probably some technical reason for why it isn't like that, but because of the way that it is, the travel log is easily my personal most forgettable feature within this entire game. Alright, so these last ones are pretty dumb, but I figured I might as well throw them in somewhere. First, the reset camera button. On PC, this is used by clicking in the middle mouse, but it's not really that needed in regular gameplay. 
The only time I've ever thought about using it is after Barber's Burst because it flips the camera towards you for some reason. And as a last bonus, events costing resin. Yep, as if there weren't enough things that I need to spend resin on, the limited time events of 1.1 also needed them. Very, very glad they figured out how dumb it was and changed it going forward. And that's all I have for this list. If you have another one that is so forgettable that I didn't even think to put it on here, comment it down below. I'll see you in the next video, and as always, thanks for watching.